Okay. Continuity. Mm -hmm. What's it all about? Uh, a lot of people say that a function is continuous when you are able to graph it without picking up your pencil. It's sort of a um, shit explanation. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't use pencils. Mm -hmm. So I have to do something else for, uh, for this. Um, really, though, uh, you know, the pros, the people who do calculus uh, and they do it well, sort of cast aside that explanation uh, much as you just did. Um, the nuts and bolts of it. What has to happen for f to be continuous at an x value? Remember, we're always looking at um, a particular point that is um, in the domain. Well, actually, one of the requirements is that the point is in the domain. Okay? So if the point is not in the domain... And then forget about it. Then it's not continuous. Exactly. Okay? Um, I, I wouldn't forget about it, because there are ways to make a function continuous, but uh, we're just asking the question, yes or no, is it yeah. continuous? Um, later on, we'll talk about um, whether or not we can fix the problem. Um, yeah, yeah, praise but, the uh, Lord. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so, f of a is defined. That's one of the requirements. Another requirement is that the limit as we go to that point uh, exists, which is actually in secret a different question, which is do the one-sided limits agree? And we know that. Right? It's like code for them. Right. And then the third uh, and final question is um, are these two things uh, cooperating or are they competing? In other words, does the limit as x go to a um, of f of x give you the same answer as uh, what you get when you plug in f of a? All right, so um, we can kind of so use number three to summarize the whole deal by just saying, uh, and I, I really like this last thing that I'm about to write uh, as a definition, um, f is continuous at a if the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals f of a, with the understanding that this equality can only be satisfied if both sides, first and foremost, exist. Right? So it's an implicit assumption um, that when I write that this is true, uh, I'm not writing a statement about on the one side of the equation Santa Claus and on the other side of the equation Tooth Fairy as an analogy for things that don't exist. Exactly. Okay. So on to actual math problems. One of the best ways to learn what something means, or I would be careful, this is right next to the microphone. Oh, it is? You're rustling around. Okay, look, we'll take see the last pumpkins. We'll, we'll, we'll take see. Take the last pumpkins? All right. <laughs> on camera, on the video. All right. <laughs> okay. That one didn't want to come out. Here we go. So, one of the best ways to learn yeah. uh, mathematical definitions is actually to learn uh, when they fail. Um, and that's where we're starting. So, I'm moving all of these, this... Uh, crapola, long-winded version to the mm -hmm. side, and we're going to use only my concise version, um, which uh, is that it, the existence of the limit is implicit. Uh, for, for this equation to be true, first and foremost, both sides have to exist. All right. So, um, on what level does... Let's go one by one. On what level, number 23, um, with f of x equal to 3 over x plus 2, and we're examining things at a equals negative 2, what goes wrong? Well, let's check. What's f of a? Well, in this case, it's f of negative 2, which is fail, right? So f of negative 2 does not exist, okay? Uh, so in fact, it fails from my original triumvirate of requirements. It fails number 2. 
f of a does not exist. Okay? What That means number 3 will automatically not be satisfied, because there's no way for f of a to equal anything, because there's no such thing as f of a. Mm -hmm. um, let's look at number 1. Um, for number 1, I've got to evaluate limit x goes to negative 2 of 3 over x plus 2. And for continuity, infinite limits are an automatic fail. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is also a fail. In chapter 2.4, we would go in and we'd say, is it positive infinity, is it negative infinity? Not for now. But for continuity, for, for the sake of continuity, um, it just doesn't exist. All right, and where did I get all this stuff? I've got my function, that's what I'm figuring out the limit of, and then I've got my a, that's where I get this thing, and then uh, here, okay, so this one fails one, two, and three, right? This is as discontinuous as possible. as you possibly can be. And if you look at 24, it's sort of exactly the same thing. Okay, I'm plugging in one into the denominator, and the, you know everything explodes. Okay, all right, let's look at um, something like, 25. So let me pause the video and fix the screen. And I meant um, delete what was there. So now number 25. Um, we've got to check. Uh, so here we're looking at um, a equals 3. All right. So we have to check if f of 3 exists. You see number 25 on the screen? Mm hmm. Uh, does it exist? No. No is the second best answer. Oh, wait, sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it does exist. Three, yeah. Because we put it in there, we slapped it onto the function. If you were using only the formula definition, mm -hmm. it would not exist. F3 okay. would not be defined. But um, because of this piecewise business, we have. Um, to find it, and we've said that f of 3 equals 4. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Please so, continue. Yes. continue. Okay. Um, so, now the question is, um, does limit x goes to 3 of f of x exist? For that particular question, we have to use the formula version of f um, because we need to look at values of f that are actually not equal to 3. That's what the limit is telling us to do. And this is a straightforward thing from the beginning of, of this chapter where you just do some factoring. Uh-oh, I'm running into them. Well, I hope this shows up. hope this shows up on uh, the screen. And, of course, this cancels, and we're left with uh, plugging in three. So that was whipped cream. No, it was shaving cream. The Barbasol. Yeah, that was, uh, so if that noise shows up on the camera. Oh, not the camera. I keep saying camera. It's a microphone. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so we plug 3 in for x, and we get 6. So, uh, yes. Um, and before, I didn't, I didn't write out yes. I guess I wrote a check mark. Um, well, yes, the, the, limit, the limit does exist. Uh, so we do satisfy 1. 1 is okay. Uh, 2 also was okay. And... So now the question is, do we satisfy three? And so, uh, oh, is it a table? No, 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 it's okay. Let's just leave it on. You think he'll give a quiz tomorrow or written? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, he he hasn't talked about this. We're we're pre lecturing anyway. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is a pre teaching. If he does give a quiz tomorrow, you already know everything that he's taught because it would cover stuff like from today. And right, right. Or most. Okay. Of it, yeah. Anyway. The viewers don't care if there's a quiz today. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's not that a quiz. All right. Uh, so I don't have any space left. I could I could move some space, but let's let's uh, pick pick a, a an ugly blatant color. Um, f of three is four, and the limit as x goes to three 
of f of x is 6. And uh, as far as I know, um, I have a pretty substantial math education. 4 is not the same as 6. Yes. Okay. So in this case, uh, we have that. Oh, that's terrible. You can't, can't do that. Um, yeah, that's... Uh... So I wonder if maybe I'll just try. Um, I just want to write... You can see that pretty well. Yeah. F of A does not equal the limit as X goes to A of F of X, right? So 3 is a fail. Okay? Cool. In the event that 3 fails, this is called a removable discontinuity. We'll get to that later. Um, let's prepare the screen for the next question. Okay, so we cleared out this screen. I want to look at number 28 here um, because, uh, again, so for number, number 28, we're looking at, again, meaning um, we're looking at whether or not uh, the function is continuous, and the first thing is uh, a is 3, and f of 3 in this example is given by this piece of the definition there, and f of 3 is 1, so of course that's okay. All right. The next thing we have to do is figure out the limit as x goes to 3 of f of x, and that means we're using this formula right here. So we're evaluating limit x goes to 3 of the absolute value of x minus 3 over x minus 3. Um, I'm going to give you some space here. For, for this thing. Um, we know that this breaks up into two things. Uh, the left limit, the limit x goes to 3 negative, and the limit x goes to 3 positive. Uh, we have an absolute value going on in this limit. Mm -hmm. Anytime you encounter an absolute value, remember like all the way back from the beginning, it's either the same or it's the negative. Yeah. Right? And for x going to 3 from the negative side, we know that x is smaller than 3. And for x going to 3 from the positive side, we know that x is bigger than 3. So all that's really just set up to do this limit x goes to 3 negative of absolute value of x minus 3 over x minus 3 because x is less than 3 x minus 3 is negative yeah so we've got to replace this with negative x minus 3 over x minus 3 cancel these guys out and we get negative 1 Okay, so what we've just done is the one-sided limit. In our effort to determine whether or not this limit exists, we did it from the left side. Exactly. And in doing so, we had to do this little, this little thingy with absolute value from before. Okay, uh, finishing it up. Limit x goes to 3 from the positive side means that x is bigger than 3 which means that the absolute value of x minus 3 is just x minus 3, because x minus 3 is positive. Uh, and, of course, x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 uh, gives you 1. Mm -hmm. The two one-sided limits do not agree. Therefore, the limit as x goes to 3 does not exist which means that we fail condition one. Yeah. Okay, we have three conditions. The second condition, as I wrote it, was that f of a exists. Uh, yeah. The first condition was that the limit exists, and then, of course, the third condition cannot be satisfied if either of the first two are unsatisfied. Yeah. Okay, so there is a tour de force of what it means to not be continuous. Nice.